God spoke to me. Uh, I'd been sober about a year and was not yet a Christian. I was a believer, but not moving forward real hard. I was at a uh, AA meeting. It was an older gentleman. Of course, I wasn't so old back then. This was 32 years ago. Uh, older gentleman sitting next to me, a couple of teeth in his head, smoking a cigarette, drinking coffee. And I was uh, pontificating how brilliant I was and uh, how I've got this program down. And, you know, you old people should really listen to me. He tugged me on the shirt, said, sit down, you're gonna die. Oh, I was angry, angry. Sat down, did as he said. We went for coffee after the meeting. And I thought I was talking to Jesus. The love, the compassion, the thoughtfulness of this old retired postal worker was incredible. And I'd never felt anything like that in my whole life. It was dramatic. I, I truly gave my life to the Lord about a year later. And, uh, but that was the first awareness that there is a God. And He's a good God. And He's sitting across the table from me drinking black coffee. It was, uh, uh, John was lost. Um, everybody thought John was the greatest kid in the world. I was class president. I was this, I was that. I had a lot of as an athlete, uh, but I was miserable. Uh, born and raised Irish Catholic, certainly went to church every Sunday with my mother. My father played golf, uh, but didn't understand who God was, or he was an angry God as far as I was concerned, but you could be appeased if you purchased a stained glass window or lit a candle. And uh, so I was searching, and I, I filled the hole early on with uh, drugs, alcohol, whatever, porn. But I kept an image. I had an image that I kept up and, and just struggled mightily with it. Um, it was very lonely, very, very difficult time. In fact, led to a couple of suicide attempts, which I was a big coward and I didn't really try real hard, so. Uh, there'd be some people that may view this that would be shocked to hear that, but. Uh, I hid. Yeah. Uh, I had walls. I could build a wall quicker than. I uh, still have that talent sometimes, but. Uh, uh, I wasn't afraid to show my vulnerability, but it had to benefit me. It, it wasn't the reaching out to help somebody else with the story. It was to get you to feel sorry for me. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed pity. I, I love self-pity. Uh, that's kind of how I live my life. So, what changed? Uh, Fear left my life. I didn't have to be afraid of what people thought of me. It took a little bit. It took some time. But that was the biggest thing. I was a people pleaser. I was an enabler. And always worried about what people thought. And would go to end lengths to make myself look good. I didn't have to do that anymore. Uh, it was a huge, huge burden. Uh, it was lifted. It was lifted. Selfishness mostly left. And 
became heavily involved in, in other people's lives, which was extremely gratifying. And, and I was told that, you know, you don't get it until you give it away. And to do things, do something for someone without expecting anything in return were miracles in a person such as myself's life, which was true. Because if I did something for you, I needed something back. I needed at least a pat on the back, a thank you, um, you know, a gift in return or something. hole was getting filled. Yes, my siblings especially. My parents were older. Um, I told them that I had a cocaine habit and I just was okay when I had a drinking problem. But, you know, cocaine habit. But they did. They did in their own way. Um, they were very stoic emotionally, both of them never too many pats on the back or stuff that I thought that I needed. Um, but especially later in life, my father did tell me that he loved me, first time ever. I was 37 years old. Um, but they noticed. I mean, I was on time. I was taking care of them. I was the only one in town, the only sibling in town. And, uh, you know, going out and shoveling the driveway and making dinner and, and just being there for them. They did. They did. I worked with my brother, and he was very similar to my father, uh, very stoic emotionally. But he, he would do it in his way, like if we were at an event, of town or overseas or, or whatever. He said, you know, if you ever have to leave, it's okay. I'm real proud of you for, uh, we were in Russia at one time and had a lunch that started at 10.30 in the morning and there were 27 bottles of vodka in the middle of the table. <laughs> and, you know, my brother, are you going to have a problem with this? Are you going to have a problem with this? We'll see if so. I think you have to leave. And, and that was interesting. But, Yes, they, they were proud of me, um, and that was wonderful. Uh, the importance of a Christian brother in my life uh, is paramount in my life. It's, it's saved my life. Uh, I pray for awareness every morning. I pray for awareness of my behavior, my sinful nature, as well as the miracles that God presents to me every single day. And many, many times those miracles are presented through another man speaking to me. Um, you know, that word that I needed to hear, whether it be a word of encouragement or a word of, hey, dummy, what are you getting into? It's incredibly important because I'm an isolator. I love to isolate. people in my life. I need men in my life to hold me accountable. Something I read just a couple of days ago, just uh, walking through the Bible, and when Paul was in prison, and it says the whole church prayed for him. And me being an isolator, that was very comforting. Here. Um, again, it's the awareness, the miracles that I've seen. I have many. <laughs> I have many. My name's John. I have a story, and I know you do. I'd love to hear it because I'm a man that's passionate about Christ.